I'm going to start off inside of React app where I'm using Next.js. And inside of my code, all I have right now is the CLD image component, which is what I want to use for being able to edit inside of my code playground. So my goal for this will be able to have an editor so that somebody can update that code in real time. And then this image will update as it changes. Now there's a lot of great options out there. I was originally trying to use code mirror to make this work and it worked really well for simple use cases, but I found out that another option really gave some more interactivity, specifically this Monaco editor for react, which is going to give us a way to basically drop in a VS code inside of our browser. We can see that inside of their demo, we get a lot of the experiences that we would expect when working in our own IDE, which is nice to have if you're trying to kind of recreate that inside of a browser. So let's go ahead and the first step will be to spin this up inside of our application. So I'm going to go to installation where what we're going to want to do is first install the dependency. I'm going to drop that in and let's just get started with the very simple usage here where I want to first grab the import and instead of dropping this right inside of my main page.tsx file, what I want to do is create a separate component where this is going to need to be a client component. So that way I can maintain a base of a server component while being able to have all that interactivity. So inside of my components, I'm going to create a new file called playground.tsx. I'm going to call that const playground equals my new component. And inside, I'm going to return eventually that editor. But first, I'm going to export my default of playground. And then finally, at the top, I'm going to go ahead and drop in that import. Now we want to go ahead and grab the editor component with the default settings. I'm going to paste that in as well. Then back inside of my page.tsx, I'm going to import that playground component. And now let's just import that in right next to my CLD image and see what happens. We can see that I actually did get an error that it's not a client component. And why? Well, because we never actually marked it as a client component. But now when the page reloads, we can see that our editor is starting to initialize there, where I can start to edit this comment where you can't really tell just because of the code that's in here right now, but this is our little editor. Now we're not going to go crazy editing this. It has a ton of options to really let you fine tune how you want it. But there's a couple things that I want to do. And starting off, we want to be able to set a default value, which is going to be that initial code. Now, rather than hard coding it in here, I want to be able to use this playground wherever I want and pass it in from wherever I want. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new prop called code, which is just going to be a string. And let's go ahead and set up those playground props to create a playground props interface where my code is going to be a string. I'm going to go ahead and set that up, but then I'm going to want to take that code. That's a string. And I want to pass that right into my default value. Now back on my page where I'm actually embedding that playground. Now we want to actually set that code where inside what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this same CLD image code that I have right there. Cause ultimately what I want to happen is I want this code to be what that other side represents. Now that's not going to update this right away. Obviously there's no connection yet, but we can see you start to kind of, well, we can start to see where this is going. Now, once I refresh the page and you're going to actually have to refresh the page because it's loaded on the client, we can see that I get my code snippet, but we have a little bit of a tab or spaces issue here. Now, generally Generally speaking, when you're doing the code in these little template literals like this, you want to make sure that you take away any tabs or spaces that you don't want inside of that and removing that indentation. And once I remove that, we can see that it was removed. And we also have a little bit on the front and back as well. And we can make sure that we always have this cleaned up, but I like to make sure that it's a little bit less error prone. So what I'm going to actually do instead is on this code, I'm just going to simply pass in a trim afterwards. And we can see that cleaned up right away for me. Now for my code editor, maybe I want to have a light and dark mode. We're not going to go into how you can switch, but for now, now I want to actually set a dark mode for this. Now built into this component, we have a light or a VS dark theme. Now you can define your own custom theme, but for now let's just use this VS dark. So I'm going to specify my theme as VS dark. And we can see that's looking a lot better. I'm also going to paste in a few other options, including just bumping up the font size a little bit out of preference. I'm going to get rid of the mini map, which is kind of what you would see on the right side here, where it's going to show basically a high level code view, which I think is unnecessary for this specific example, and also get rid of the context menu, which kind of takes over the Chrome browser and does its own thing. And we can see the font size bumped up a little bit. I think that looks a little bit easier to read. And if we try to right click anything, we can see that we get the typical Chrome uh, context menu, which I think is important to maintain. So next, we only see this code editor right now. I want to make sure that we see both this code editor and the actual image. Now, later, what we're going to do is we're going to actually embed both the live preview and this editor inside of this playground. So I'm going to just start moving that over. So I'm going to grab my import statement, paste that in at the top, and I'm going to also grab my image component itself. And I'm going to paste that in after the editor. But of course, we want to make sure that we add a wrapper div around that. And then on that div, since I have Tailwind installed, I'm going to simply add grid, grid, uh, was it grid calls two? 
And we can already see this is looking a lot closer to what we would see in all those other code playgrounds that we've typically interact with on the web. Now I've gone ahead and also taken the liberty to add a few more styles here. I wanted to add a background of white to the entire thing. I wanted to also add a little padding to the editor and then match the background. That way it looked a little bit more visually pleasing. We want to also get rid of this height as that's not necessary. We're going to be able to control that ourselves. But then for the image itself, I want to center that so that it just looks like it's in its nice little canvas. And now with all those changes, I think we have a little bit more breathing room here. We can see that it's nice and centered and I think that we're ready to go. So now that we actually have our editor, we want to make sure that anytime we uh, interact with it, it actually updates the image itself. Now to start, we need to listen to any of the events that actually happen on the editor. And to do that, we can use the on change handler, which we're going to pass in a handle on change. And I'm going to define my function of handle on change. And inside, I'm going to receive an argument of value, and that's going to be a string. And what that value is going to be is it's going to be our code that has changed. Now, technically with this editor, it's going to give us a red flag here because it's going to actually make this value optional. Now, it probably doesn't make sense that if you change it, but I guess if you don't have anything in there, but should it still be an empty string? Anyways, we have our value and this is going to be what's changed. So let's log that out to see what that actually looks like. And if I have my terminal loaded up or my web console and I start to make the changes, we can see that anytime we make a change, it's going to show us that new code. So what we want to happen is anytime we make that change and we get that code string, we want to update this other side. Now, again, there's some great options for how we can do this, one being HTML React parser, but I hit some limitations with that in the way that it actually parses custom components, which we're going to use here. Now, if you only want to use just standard HTML, this will probably work well, but what happens is it turns all the properties into lowercase, where if I have my remove background, for instance, it would make this with a, low, a lowercase b, which is problematic. So what I'm going to use instead is this library called React Live, which actually gives us a lot of tools for being able to do both the editor and the preview. But for our instance, we're going to just use it for the preview. Now, this is exactly how Vercel's OG Image Playground works. And shout out to them for the inspiration for this, where because of the roadblocks that I kept hitting, I remembered this demo and figured this is a good way to try to replicate a good experience. But to get started, we're going to run npm install React Live. So I'm going to drop that in and we can start to import all of our components inside of our playground. And then we can actually drop the components themselves instead of the image that we have rendered there. Now, if we look inside of the browser again, we can see that we both get an editor there and we get the live results. But again, we want to use this more advanced editor that's more like VS Code instead of the editor here, even though it works well for its purposes. But all we want to do is get this live rendering and then sync it up with our actual editor. So to do that, I'm going to simply get rid of the editor and I could probably get rid of the error too, though that will probably come in handy at some point, but I'm just going to leave this live preview for now. I'm also going to pass in my code that we saw before. So I'm going to say code. And if we refresh the page, we can see that nothing's actually loading. And the reason is React Live has no context of this custom component. So what we need to do is add a scope option where our scope is going to simply include our CLD image component. And just like that, we can see that we now get that showing on the page. Now we're not quite done yet. This isn't actually synced up, but let's do that now. Where the way that this is set up, we're passing this prop directly into the editor and the live provider. But whenever this changes, we need to actually save that change so that we can propagate it through the different components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new state instance. I'm going to say constant code is and set code is equal to use state, but also make sure that I import use state from react. We want to also make sure that we rename this. I'm going to call this default code and I'm going to pass this in as the default. But now whenever this value changes, I'm going to call this set code and pass in that value. I'm going to make sure TypeScript is happy. We can add or empty string and you can probably handle that a little bit more elegantly, but we'll do it with that first. But now if I go back and I try to change it to turtle, we can see that it changes on the fly. Now, if I wanted to not only just change the source, but I wanted to remove the background, we can see that it was readily removed. And if I wanted to add a underlay or a background layer, let's call it images galaxy we can see that my turtle's now in space. Really, it didn't take a whole lot in order to get all this running where we have our editor that we can live edit just like we were if we're on our desktop VS Code instance, as well as the preview that's going to show the rendered version of that code that changes. Now there's a whole lot more that you can do with this. Like one for instance is maybe you want to throttle the changes so that you don't get a new request every single time you update this. Because if it's trying to render for every single character that you type and you're typing a lot of characters, it might not recognize that and you might start to get errors. 
And we're not gonna cover it here, but maybe you can consider adding a throttle or a debounce on your handle on change so that it only updates every so often rather than for every single keystroke. But with this editor, there's a whole lot more options that you can configure to make it exactly how you want from a custom theme just to a bunch of different options that you can pass in. What's your favorite code playground or editor? Let me know in the comments. Next up, learn how you can spin up a new documentation site easily where you can embed this editor using Nextra.